In Korea, there is a four kilometer wide strip of land that divides north from south. Called the Demilitarized Zone, or DMZ, this strip of land is a security measure between the two nations. After the Korean War, the DMZ was created as a physical buffer to prevent, or at least limit, the effectiveness of an attack from either side. And from this real-life example, we get the network security concept of a DMZ. A model where traffic must pass through a secured perimeter before it's allowed to reach our internal network. When we're thinking about network security, we can roughly classify our networks in two ways. Insecure networks that we need to access and protected networks that we need to defend. Our protected networks contain our resources, which may include workstations, servers, databases, and anything else that should be kept secure. The insecure network is any area that we don't have security control over. However, we still need to access its resources or something in that network may need to access ours. A prime example of this is the internet, but we also think of a network managed by a business partner, such as a supplier or a customer. We don't manage the security of these networks, so we should not assume that they are secure. Let's imagine that we have a website that some people on the internet need access to. This is made up of a web server and a database which contains sensitive information. Clearly our primary goal here is to protect this sensitive data. So one thing that we will do is add a firewall between the internet and our protected network. We will usually want to complement the firewall with an IPS, but for this video we won't get into that sort of detail. Can you see the risk with this topology? When we expose the web server to the internet like this, there is really only one layer of network security between a potential attacker and our sensitive information. Now imagine that an attacker has found a way past our firewall. Maybe they're clever and they've exploited a bug. Maybe the firewall has failed for some reason. Or maybe we've made a mistake when we configured it. Right away, this attacker has access to our sensitive data. What can we do about this? Well, we've talked about the defense in depth principle before. In short, this principle states that security should be layered, so if one layer fails or is ineffective, another layer can mount a defense. A DMZ, also known as a perimeter network, is a shining example of this. The DMZ itself is a network between the insecure area and the protected area. We will put services that are allowed to be accessed from the internet inside the DMZ. We will definitely keep our sensitive data out of the DMZ. Even authentication details will be different to those in the protected network. Think of our example from before. We have a website that people need to access from the internet. We can put a reverse proxy server in the DMZ. Clients on the internet will access the reverse proxy server, which does not have any sensitive data. The reverse proxy server will then open a new connection to the web server in the protected network and retrieve the required web pages on behalf of the client. Can you see the extra layer of security we've added here? Any device we expose to the internet will take the brunt of most attacks and therefore assumes the most risk. Even if an attacker gets lucky and is able to compromise the DMZ, they haven't yet reached our sensitive data. So compromising one part of the system has not compromised the entire system. And of course, that's just one example. Another is with email. Perhaps you're running Microsoft's Exchange server. You can put an edge transport server in the DMZ while keeping your hub transport and mailbox roles safe. Now, let's consider how we can build a DMZ. Start by defining what needs to be protected. This will generally be a straightforward question, as these days we need to protect just about everything. Next, find entry points to the network. The obvious one is where devices connect to the internet. So we're thinking about access to your web servers, uh, we're thinking about where emails come in, and that sort of thing. Don't ignore any partner networks, customer networks, or even WAN connections that your organization may not have control over. Think about VPNs. Do you have control over where your staff connect from? Now that you have all this information, decide if it's okay to have a single DMZ area, or if you need more than one. If the internet is your only entry point, 
then one's going to be fine. If you have access to a partner or customer network, you may be offering them different services than you offer to the internet. In this case, two perimeter networks may be ideal. There are two approaches to building your DMZ. The first is to use dual home servers. This is where your server, either physical or virtual, has two network interfaces. Each interface is connected to two different networks, one to the insecure network and one to the protected network. This provides a high level of separation, but it still has some downsides. It's hard to scale if you have many devices, you still only have protection from one firewall and IPS, and not all appliances have two network cards. In addition, each of these servers needs special routing configuration to support the two interfaces. The other option is to have an entirely separate network for the DMZ. There is a firewall on each side, so all traffic gets thoroughly checked for attacks. I prefer this method personally, as it scales very well. It's suitable for all servers and appliances, and it's a great place for VPNs and partner networks to connect. However, in some ways, it is a little bit more complicated. There's additional firewalls to configure, and you need to consider routing. The simplest routing option is to use layer three firewalls. Of course, you could also use dedicated routers along with layer two firewalls if you wanted to. When you don't think these aspects through, it's easy to build your DMZ poorly. One mistake that's easy to make is to simply create a new VLAN on a router and put some servers in there. Now this will add some extra security because you're still using a reverse proxy or something like that, but there's still no other security between the DMZ and the protected network. Traffic is simply routed between the two. If an attacker were to compromise servers in the DMZ, they would have full network access to the protected areas as well. Another easy mistake to make is to put a domain controller in the DMZ, perhaps for logon purposes, which extends Active Directory outside the protected area. Personally, I recommend against this. There's a lot of information in Active Directory and you need to protect that as well. One alternative, if you need Active Directory in the DMZ, is to create a new domain for this area and then if you need them joined, you could consider a forest trust or something like that. Or perhaps if this is just for authenticating two devices in the DMZ, consider a different technology, maybe Radius, TACAX, or LDAP. Now, let's think about how we can deploy our firewalls for a simple DMZ network to protect our resources from the internet. Keep in mind that I say firewalls, but often they're paired with an IPS. There are two basic ways we could do this, and each have their own upsides and downsides. The first option is to have two separate firewalls, with the DMZ network sandwiched between them. One firewall protects the DMZ from the internet, the other protects the secure network from the DMZ. Each firewall has two interfaces for this purpose. When traffic comes in from the internet, it is checked at the first firewall. Then it arrives at the server in the DMZ, and the DMZ server passes the packet on. It's now checked at the second firewall before it's allowed to access the secure network. The other alternative is to use a single firewall that has a connection into each of these three areas. It will use different rules depending on which two areas the traffic has been flowing between. When traffic comes in from the internet, it will need to pass through the firewall and then be forwarded to the DMZ area. When traffic is sent from the DMZ, it will pass through the same firewall and be forwarded to the protected network. So which of these two options is better? There are pros and cons to each. Using two firewalls is generally considered to be more secure. When there are two separate firewalls, there are extra layers that an attacker may need to compromise before gaining access to the network. However, deploying two firewalls is more expensive as there's more devices to buy, license, and maintain. This is both a financial cost as well as a time-based cost. Using a single firewall may also be a bottleneck for traffic. With all traffic going through a single firewall, maybe twice, you need to make sure that the single device can handle it. Two firewalls, on the other hand, would split the volume of traffic across two different devices. However, the most secure option is to use two firewalls from two different vendors. If there's a security flaw in one of the firewalls, chances are that the same flaw will not exist in the other firewall. This is yet another example of defense in depth, changing how our layers work so one can be a backup for the other. Keep in mind though that this does make your job harder. 
In addition to the higher cost, you need to know both firewalls well. A badly configured firewall may be the same as no firewall at all. The way you choose to implement your DMZ is up to you and your team. But if you're exposing your services to the internet or other network where you don't have security control, then the DMZ is a must have.